Welcome back to the Mastering Runeterra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Runeterra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Runeterra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Runeterra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Runeterra. Welcome back to the Master Guterra Podcast with Jay and Bay. We've got yet another show for you of some type or variety. Uh, before we jump into it, um, I just want to thank all of our subscribers, all of our patrons. Seriously, thank you guys so much uh, for all the support you've shown us this year uh, and before, now that I guess we're over a year old now. Um, it, it really means the world to us. Uh, you know, we're striving all the time to bring you guys more value, to do more for co- the community. And, um, you know, we got a lot of really fun, exciting stuff planned for 2023. Um, really looking forward to sharing it with you guys in the near future. Uh, if this airs before Saturday the 17th, we're currently recording this Friday morning, uh, there is a tournament that we're hosting on Saturday the 17th at 9 a.m. Pacific. So if you see this before that and you want to go jump in, um, you can find the uh, details in the description of this video. Um, okay, well, we don't have a whole lot of time, so let's just jump right into it. Um, Majin, what's uh, what's the hotness right now? Do you, I guess, you want to tell everyone, do you know what you're bringing tomorrow? Because you're playing the tournament, right? No. Um, <laughs> I, well, yes, I am playing in the tournament. No, I don't know what I'm bringing. Um, I will probably bring, my favorite deck right now is uh, the same deck that Alan has been playing like a bunch. He came in my stream and dumped the code on me. Um, it's a Seraphine bar deck, so it's P and Z, but the second region is, um, rise. So you splash one rise to get access to all of the rise region spells. Uh, and then you play three copies of assembly bot and it's really what's good. Assembly bot do? <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, assembly bots, a three mana one, one that every time you cast a spell, it gets plus oh, one. Okay. Plus right. One. That one. Mm-hmm. Huh? And it gets insane. Like it gets 30, 30 and bigger. Like every game it's nuts that's wild yeah that sounds like exactly the kind of deck i'd like to play just cheating just all the spells yep i've had opponents cast world ender flip into a board full of darkens and then they can't attack because <laughs> my stuff's so <laughs> big <laughs> that's awesome good stuff okay so you're, you're like for sure bringing that deck then yeah that'll probably make it in um then i don't know it's hard to go wrong with like the vein atrox deck right now that deck is like really really powerful uh specifically i think the one that's like Three Vein, two Aatrox, one Quinn is probably the best one. Uh, it plays like Feet Feather Tracker and like um, the Valor card, Blinding Assault. Um, I found that one to give me the most trouble because like the birds put early, like the birds plus weapon puts so much pressure on your board. Hi, Quinn. Yeah. Um, and so it's really tough for you to like establish anything. And then by the time you're able to work around that, Aatrox is hitting the board. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, bird plus weapon is like if you can't deal with it, you just kind of get locked out of the game sometimes. It's a real, a real problem. And like you say, even if you can eventually deal with it, it just like buys them enough time that uh, you know, they just, they keep hitting you with stuff. Um, and then what about if you had if you what do you think your third deck might be? I mean, if I'm running a traditional good stuff lineup, I don't even know. Like it'd probably be Red Gwen, mm-hmm. right? Like that would be. That'd be like the traditional third best deck. Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, I haven't looked at matchup tables. I don't know what any of this is good into. I don't know what I'm supposed to ban. Like, because I've been spending all my time on ladder just playing Rise. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to play the Rise Seraphine deck into anything. Um, so it makes that, like, really tough for me. The lineup, it's not going to be a super well thought out lineup. I'm just going to be playing, like, three Are decks. you happy to play into anything because you think it's that good? Or just because you enjoy playing it so much and you think it's good? Both. Yeah. Yeah. How, where, is it, like, high tier one? Yeah. 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 It's it's the Seraphine deck with the most agency that we've ever had. Hmm. Um, in my opinion. Um, all Because you get to play all these, like, Tellstones. And stuff like that. Um, 
you get to do some really weird stuff and it's awesome it's so cool and i love it so much <laughs> um how high like where's the the ceiling and the floor at like how difficult is it to play we've kind of talked about how good it is already um is it like obviously when you have all of these options that of course makes it difficult like every seraphine deck is probably like you know you would say more difficult to play than a lot of the decks but there's also in the seraphine decks or in the spell heavy decks there's also a very big gap in like how difficult they are where do you think this one kind of lines up more difficult but like your game plan is strong enough just like on the board that even if you're not super strong with the deck you'll still probably get good results like just really big assembly bot is good victor is good leveling seraphine is good <laughs> <laughs> like all these cards are just really really good right uh yeah you have to make a bunch of decisions during the game but as if you've played a bar deck you can play this deck it's not that difficult. yeah that's kind of like the, the the question i was really trying to ask behind the question um well that's awesome i think i'm technically also playing the tournament tomorrow as well uh i have to work in the middle of the day though so i'll probably play for like three or four hours or something and then just be like either i got knocked out or i could like you know be on twitter and be like you guys are all lucky that made top eight i was undefeated would i would have got there obviously um just because i want to play um what else what else do you okay so what do you expect to see what do you think's uh like what's what's hot right now what, what are some of the top decks what do you think people will be bringing expect to see a lot of aatrox of course he's just really good and he's just like basically impossible to counter if i understand it correctly like he's just really really strong into everything um because you can just have different game plans right like if you're playing against an aggressive deck like bird birds do a really good job like holding down the fort and then you play aatrox and you magically gain six life for no reason um and then he kills you <laughs> like that's the thing it's like you gain a bunch of life and then on the next turn they world under flip into three darkens and you're dead yeah um the next is like super powerful and it has so many different not so many different game plans but like it can lean heavier on one game plan or the other to kind of like suit its needs yeah. um so i expect to see aatrox everywhere you could see a lot of Kane Aatrox. I think the deck's like fine, but I think it's like strictly worse than Vayne Aatrox. Um, whenever I play against Kane Aatrox, I'm like, okay, just big dumb threat. Just don't die to big dumb threat. And then I play against Vayne, I'm like, oh my god, they can do so much stuff here. Like all the time. They're always attacking me. And it's like, ugh. Also, I play Ionia, so of course Vayne's better than me. <laughs> I mean, but, that makes um, sense. I think it's just a strict. That makes sense. Deck. So like Kane Vayne, uh, Kane was like, the card that went off or sorry vane was the card that went vane, off yeah um kane was just a stitch yeah and then if she was around. if she was already going off then yeah then kane would come down to like you know kind of finish the game but if you just had kane it was like oh i really hope i could level him and i'm like i really hope he still wins the game for me mm -hmm. so yeah yep. kind of same thing kind of same thing uh seraphine decks still gonna be a lot of them Red Gwen's going to be really popular, as always. Well, maybe not. It's a community tournament. People like to play more for fun stuff. Um, but this is a buy-in tournament, so I don't know. Uh, and then Discard Aggro is putting up some serious numbers. Expect to see that. Nice, yeah. I love seeing it come. I hated that deck for such a long time. Uh, not for any like particularly good reason. And maybe hate's a, a strong word. I like kind of liked it, but then... I had a hate on for it ever since I played it at like one seasonals. I think I like jammed it in as my third deck, and it was just abysmal. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been long enough now, though. I'm like, I'm like, kind of. It's like nostalgic. I'm like, hey, it's back. It was so bad for so long, and I kind of felt bad for it. You know, just kept trying. It just kept getting kind of like accidentally hit by like, oh, Draven got hit, huh? Oh, like this is like <laughs> it got nerfed without meaning yep. to get nerfed um boom boom, boom. yeah <laughs> rummage um i guess that one needed to be a rummage that one needed to be hit um but yeah it's like i'm kind of glad to see it and i like that's one of the things i like about runeterra is that archetypes can go away for so long and then come back and it's like something about that's like kind of nice um i guess we, you get that yeah. in magic too but like a little bit less it's not always quite the same it happens more in runeterra um what else? What else has been tearing it up on the ladder? Like so far, yeah, Aatrox is like I looked at the uh the leaderboard. It's like just different flavors of Aatrox, like uh kind of just smashing. 
I think you'll see a pivot to bar decks. I think like I think I think the Seraphine Rise deck is really, really good. Um maybe in a week I'll be like, ah, I was wrong. But um right now I think it's super strong. Uh although my interpretation of the meta is super flavored by the fact that I've jammed like I don't know, 40 games of Ionia Rise. Like it's all I'm playing. <laughs> um I told my Twitch chat I was gonna hit masters with only rise. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. And have you gone there yet? Um I it was one game away yesterday. Oh gate cap. It was an 80 LP diamond one, didn't get there. Um I'm like three games away, so I'm at like diamond one forty LP. Um hoping to make it today. I'm gonna go on stream right after we finish recording this. And then I'm gonna do something else with my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, uh, I mean, this season does count for seasonals. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're back at it. Um, does it. Does it feel like it's back for you? I mean, everyone's kind of back and playing stuff. For me, like, I don't know. Because there hasn't been, like, an announcement for kind of, like, what's happening or, like, with seasonals or, like, hey, it's back. And, like, this is what's going on. Like, I, like, almost kind of forget. Or does it feel real yet? It doesn't feel real. I have a lot of things to think about right now. Yeah. Um. So that's kind of that's kind of one of the things is like there's just a lot going on for me at the moment. Um. But yeah, I'm gonna hit masters with the Sionia Rise deck, which like by the way, don't play. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um. It was like it, if the if Vein Aatrox didn't exist, it would be pretty good. But like Vayne is so good against you. Because your main yeah. like defensive tool is Eye of the Dragon. And any deck that can attack twice is like just insane against Eye of the Dragon and always has been. Um like I don't think I've lost to Kane Aatrox. Hmm. Um I don't really lose to Bar decks either, usually. That one I find surprising, um, but like I guess I could see it. It's not quite fast enough. Yeah. They can't put pressure on you, and if they can't put pressure on you, I get to set yeah. up. And if I get to set up, it gets really tough for you. Um and like what really throws me off is the deck plays like Yi, three copies of Yi. Yeah, Master Yi, two, three quick attack, three mana, that mm -hmm. guy. Um, I was like, this is the worst card in existence. So I cut him and then I started losing. <laughs> so I put him back in <laughs> and then I started winning. And I was like, okay, what's happening here? Um, it's just like, it's a nice play on three. And Yi's discounted stuff is like really yeah. good. It's like so good in this deck because you need to be activating flow. Exactly. And, it, and also you just like, yeah, you, you, the deck is so mana hungry, right? It's so it's quite possibly the most mana hungry deck I've ever played. Yeah, so because we were we were playing a little bit in the team call and uh, we were talking about what to cut. I wanted to cut. Uh, what's it called? Tasty Faithfolk. Are you still, are you still playing Tasty Faithfolk? No, I cut any unit that's not Eye of the Dragon and Claws of the Dragon because I was running into board space issues all yeah. the time. We played three games and tasty favor brought it in her hand every single game yeah. um yeah. and i was like cut that over like mastery doesn't and i was like i was like you like i'm pretty sure it would be better here like you need a warm body and you need to do something other than like potentially gain you some life maybe sometime uh which that guy does and do you ever flip him do you ever just like flip him like just actually get him going yeah once a couple once times a while. It's a yeah. nice little backup also yeah. it's Playing also like D. if you play him it's like he's kind of man intensive to get rid of yeah and like the deck plays twin disciplines, so sometimes they try and fail, and that sets them pretty far behind and puts you ahead. Yeah. And then like he cracks in a little bit, he discounts two of your spells. Maybe you trade with something, and then you're like you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, you did exactly what you needed him to do. Um, let's see what else. Are there any other? Where are the Shadow Isles P and Z decks? Is there any Dark Donger or Seraphine of that flavor left? None. They just can't keep yeah. up. I don't think like um, Aatrox is a beating and a half. Like those decks are just outvalue you, right? Um, their end game's just better. Their early game's just better. <laughs> like it's just better than you. Um, and then like Dark Donger could never keep up with the bar decks. And that's still, well, not could never. It was a dog to it, right? It was unfavored. Um, and that hasn't changed. And so like, it's just a tough time to be a Dark Donger, I think. Now, if like Aggro continues to rise, Lol. Then um maybe Shadow Isles comes back. You know, we see like Vile Feast decks kind of pick up again. I've been seeing people trying to play like FTR and Anivia, which is so funny because I'm playing a deck with like six bounces, <laughs> counter spells, 
a landmark game plan that they can't interact with. It's like so funny. I'm like FTR and I'm already counting my LP. <laughs> so what you're saying is they should unnerf Watcher. I'm with you, Ryan, if you're listening. Bring Watcher back. I miss my baby. Give give Failure Shadow Isles a chance. Would it even be good? How good would it be right now? The old... You could, which part are you unnerfing? Are you fully unnerfing it? Because remember, it used to be on four things. Yeah, full unnerf. And then also it would obliterate full the deck. whole deck immediately. Full unnerf. Whole unnerf? Yeah. yeah, it would be. It's it was just better for good. FTR. Well, F yeah, yeah FTR exactly. hasn't been good really like forever, ever. Even when it's good, it's like, yeah, it's not really that good. You would hate out Bardex from the meta. They couldn't play. You're killing them on turn eight. What if they kill your watcher? I, that, that was, was never, never a, thing. a yeah. thing. They got a lot of them. You have like three fading <laughs> memories. You got Matron. Yeah, like, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, long story short, Failure Shadow Isles has been bad basically for a long time. Like since since the watcher left, right? Since TLC left. Like I, mm. I don't think it's been good really since then. And Nivea has never really been good. Yeah. Um, if maybe so, like in foundations, and if it was yeah, good, so, or like at least not even if it's not like a full revert, like maybe you know something, so, mm -hmm. some sort of you could take so like it used to do the whole yeah. deck, and it would do it on you would you could it cost zero on four, uh -huh. eight cost now it's five eight cost and it doesn't do the whole deck. Like you could take away either one of those, and probably be the, right. yeah the remove the whole like, deck is the really powerful one. That's really because like you're cheating one. in yeah, it. You're cheating in play. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing. I don't know. Try like maybe put it to, put wouldn't. it to one card. Try put it to one card. Give them one turn, not like two. Not Give them two one turns. turn. I actually like that. Yeah. Yeah. One turn. Yeah. You get one attack token. That seems fair. That seems a little bit more. I'm balanced. down with that. Give that a try. Mm -hmm. Um, and then speaking of worlds and stuff that was good at worlds, uh, you watched worlds from one of the watch parties, right? I did. Uh, the New York watch party. Yeah, there's a bunch of pictures on like Twitter and stuff. If anybody yeah. wants to go check so, like, those you out. Like, a, I, like um, I saw this. You got like a box with like a bottle of like champagne or wine or something in it. Like what? what's the deal? No? I don't think oh, so. Okay. I saw someone had a, had a um, box with like. I didn't get a box with a bottle of champagne in it. <laughs> I thought. Yeah, I don't know. What the hell? I saw one <laughs> uh, and I was like. I thought maybe those were like the boxes that we got with our spiffy jackets and everything mm. but I, i'm pretty sure it was like a watch party box i thought i don't know i know what you're talking about i remember seeing that yeah i don't know what it is though um but yeah the place we went to was really really cool it was like um it's like bar it was like you know like, like a pc bang like a pc okay. cafe yeah with all like the computers and uh -huh. everything it was like that but it was a bar and it was a really cool like cool bar um and then they had like a viewing area with like a gigantic projector screen that's where we were um then if you walk past it, they have all these different like gaming setups, PlayStations, Xbox, PCs, yeah, switches, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was sick. It was really cool. Very fun event. Got to meet a lot of cool people. How many people were there like watching the event? 20 something. Yeah. They they announced the very last second. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, but I would I would say probably like 25 off the top of my yeah. head. Was it like they have it on like a projector or something or like a big screen or yeah. Yeah, and then so we all had like we had our tables and we had like little chairs and stuff. So we're all hanging out watching it. It was really Dude. sick. And then yeah, you could walk ten steps to the bar, go get your beverage, sit back that's down. So, it was that's that's cool. that's amazing. That's like that's the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that they did that. They had quite yep. a few of them around the world. Um, I wish they had announced them a little bit earlier and kind of like maybe give a little more info. Because even when I was looking at, I'm like, I can't make it to one of these, but I was still interested. And I I couldn't really figure out what was going on or what it was too much. But the fact that they did them very cool and i love to see them get even bigger like you know in new york la like that's those are some big uh metropolitan areas like what if you just like you know even for like seasonals or something just have like a little viewer party you have to give people anything but just like this is the little meetup every couple of every so yeah, many maybe. months or whatever you know um because like it wouldn't be too bad it was that, the first LAN event for rentera i ever went to and it wasn't even in a, like a, a tournament yeah anything. And then, we're, so were you guys all like yelling at the screen and like, uh, like talking about plays and stuff and like gasping yeah. uh -huh. and, and shouting and like, uh -huh. yeah. Someone would make like a sick read or like a misplay and you'd hear everyone go like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was fun. No, that's, that's amazing. I wish I was there. Um, what were your big, what were your big takeaways from Worlds? After 
what am I after day one when what am I was out? I didn't really watch the rest of it. I was kind of too heartbroken after mm-hmm. that. I couldn't, I couldn't do anymore. Uh, Aatrox good. Uh huh. Was like the big yeah. one. Um, Vayne is still the best. Well, now Aatrox. I don't even consider Aatrox a champion. He's just like a step above. Um, Vayne, Vayne and Aatrox are the two best champions in the game. Um, and then you get to play them in the same deck, <laughs> which is gross. Um, let's see. Red Gwen still got it, but we knew that. Um, I the main takeaway was some things need to be hot fixed, <laughs> and then some things got hot fixed, and I'm feeling better. Like Champion Strength was an absurd card. Um, people didn't quite figure out like how absurd, and the Champion Strengths list weren't like super refined yet. So like, what am I was super close. Um, I think like his Leona deck was like. And still is one of the best champion strike decks. Um, the PNZ Demacia one is now like Jinx Teemo. Well, not really anymore because it got nerfed. But Jinx Teemo was like way better able to take advantage of the champion strike shell. You just run like three acorns, three forge chiefs, four cannons, right? It's just better into that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, there's like the Demacia Bandle spam one as well. And I think like, I think. If what am I's lineup was like, if he had more time and um, more, and if like the public was able to get access to the decks and stuff, I think his triple Demacia strength lineup would have been like far and away the best lineup in the game. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you thought of his lineup uh, and some others post post worlds. Was he the only yeah. one that went triple uh, champion strength? I yep. think so, right? Yep. Yeah. I just, I just like I played against Champion Strength post worlds or whatever. Like I'd go on ladder and I'd play, and like the amount of times I just died on turn five is like insane. Yeah, I'd I'd remove like four units and still just die on turn five. Yeah, because I mean all you need is a portal cannon nuts. and a Champion Strength. That's lethal, and then you're yeah. dead. That's it. Yeah, um, it was absurd. And like his his he had the idea. He had like he absolutely nailed the right idea. I think like he definitely ran a little bad. He ran a little bad. I think it. I think it just like wasn't. It wasn't quite there. Yeah, because like like the the him running bad was he didn't draw champion strength, and then his deck did nothing, and he died. He fell apart, and you can't really yeah. have that. That's so a, that's too much. He played like he played decks. So he played versions that were like <clears throat> very what am I right? Yes. They were like much more like value focused. Um. So even if they draw, they didn't draw champion strength. They could play a value game plan. But the problem was is they couldn't. Because if you're trying to play a value game plan against these decks, that that's what they do. Or you're playing against Aatrox or, have, or Red Gwen. Exactly. They're gonna, yeah, they have the end game. They're going to beat yeah. you. You're just a worse version of them. So what we saw immediately after Worlds on ladder and even during Worlds is um, these champion strength decks just lean super hard the other way. They would just lean super hard into it and they'd be really aggressive. And that's how they would do it. So like, uh, what time I played Jace Lux, which makes sense. Champion Strength, eight mana card. There's six mana cards that are really good there. But the counter, like the same shell, but flipped is Jinx Teemo, which just does Champion Strength better. And then also, um, if you don't hit Champion Strength, you see a lot of fucking cards, right? All your cards cycle. And you have Jinx, which just kills exactly, people. Exactly, yeah, I was going to say. And you just have Jinx. And like an aggressive shell, which like sometimes you're just like, oh, did you stumble? You die now. You swim. Yeah, or... You just have a punching a puncher's chance every single time. And Jinx is goddamn good now that she gets the rocket. She's so good. Now she gets the rocket She's, right away. I think she, yeah. I think the best champs in the game are like Aatrox, Vayne, Jinx, yeah. Seraphine. Yeah. Seraphine's only up there because Bar exists. <laughs> like Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever see I wonder how Riot feels about Bar right now. I'm glad that we're getting it for a little bit longer. Because it's definitely not overpowered right now. I don't think it needs to be nerfed at yeah. all. I think people are like it's never like a the winningest deck in the format. Not even close. Yeah, it's just I think people it wasn't people last just season either. Are, you know, like to complain about the like, oh, they had that card. That's why I lost. They give that as their excuse. <laughs> My favorite is when people say that is the only card they could have <laughs> had, and it's like, bro, I could count off like eight <laughs> time, like, right now. Every time. It's like yeah. yeah. If I scroll down the list of two mana cards, like all of them be yeah. you. <laughs> or like, yeah, or even just like five mana cards off of like the fan or something. Like the, the only thing, like, well, there was also yeah. 
these ones. This one, that, that, that one, and these this three one, game yeah, live. This and one makes it so you don't kill That them. one's actually way worse yeah. for you. Yeah. Actually, that's the other one you forgot about where they just win the game immediately. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. And, like, I get it. And I mean, no one likes to lose, and then people like to lose the things that they feel like are cheese. But guess what? Love. I love it so much to get to play with all these different cards. So fun. Like a mad scientist. You just fucking glue it and you tape it together and you just find a W. Oh, the best. So good. It's good stuff. Yeah, so good. good. Stuff. Yeah. Um, what about uh so what about the who won? I forget their name. Aragorn. Aragorn. That's right. How would I ever forget that name? Um, brought a was it Ionia uh Ziggs to Leah? Yeah, it was the Ionia Ziggs Talia. We played Rita, three Unworthy yeah. Soul and three Cubs of Black Flame. So what you do is you Black Flame Talia. Talia the Black Flame. Right? Oh. And then when you attack, you have three Talias and it fills the whole stack. <laughs> like, I died to this yesterday because I forgot it would fill I, uh, the whole stack. I was ready to just I knew it had all. all those cards in it. I didn't understand the interaction because I never actually got to see it played. And then, yeah. It plays three Cubs of Unworthy Soul. Which usually costs like three mana, right? Because yeah. flow. Um, and so they would like you'd black flame Talia attack, and then they try to do something to Talia because she like kills you, right? So they try to do something to Talia, or like they block a certain way, and you could bounce the ephemeral Talia back to your hand, and then copy black flame, and then the next turn you do the thing. It's like a pretty nasty deck. <laughs> yeah, is that still a deck? Like, do you think we'll have like has that been showing up on you the ladder? Play it. Will we see some of it tomorrow? I think it's more of a tournament deck than anything yeah. else. Um, as Ziggs Talia has like basically always been, um, especially since like discard aggro is kind of running rampant. I don't want to play that matchup from the Talia Zig side. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. What did you think of the the play that we saw? I mean, there was definitely a, there was some punts and stuff, uh, but I I felt like yeah. once we got to the top eight again, I didn't get to watch all the all the games or all the matches, but the ones I did see. Mm. Especially from a lot of these players who, like, you know, are not named players, I guess you would say. Like, like people I've actually just never heard of before, even, like, in grassroots or whatever. Yeah. I had not heard of basically anyone in the top. Yeah. Eight, I feel like. Um, I don't know all the people in the top. Except, eight, like, but... Swallowist. Yeah. Um, and Maddie. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but I was, I was impressed. I was, actually... I was impressed by a yeah. lot of the play. And it felt to me like a bit of a passing of the torch. Um, because you see this... Like, you saw this at the beginning of Seasonals, right? The first Seasonals ever was, like, kind of a joke. Um, obviously, Push be crushed because he's so good. Um, but it was, like, you know, no one knew what they were doing. Everyone was trying out different stuff. And then, mm-hmm. you know, there's that hockey stick graph of, like, people got better and better and better and better and better. And better. Um, to the point now, when you look at the top 32, it's, like, people got their on a lock. Like, oh, there's yeah. some crushers. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say round of 64, not impressed. Yeah. So. Um I was not impressed even a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was embarrassed and then, for myself and my opponents. I was like, this is just a bunch of sloppy play. <laughs> uh, which is maybe why NA didn't do so well maybe. <laughs> in Worlds. Um, round of 16, not impressed. Um, I mean, there was like, some... I saw a lot of people. Yeah, you saw a lot of mistakes. No, there, there, were some players, I, there were some players I was really impressed with. Those people made yeah, top four. The, the, yeah. Some didn't. Yeah, right? the ones that made top eight even. It, their play was from good to great. There was like, yeah, no. The second we went, we were playing top sixteen, and I was like, oh, some of these players are really good, but like this feels like what's going on? Like, there's a lot of punts, and not even like your normal amount of high stress punts. There's like a lot of punts, and I think there's people that were like, I think people had like the wrong macro play, like a yeah. lot. I think like roles were incorrectly assigned, yeah. um, which is not something you expect to see at like a top sixteen of worlds, right? You're like, you should have this fucking down. I get this is a new like format. I but... would I would guess it has. to And then we to went to top with eight that, with the the way that the new the, for sure some yeah. of the people in the top sixteen just didn't really have people to play with. For sure, I think I think that's and, like because there were some different. games where I was yeah. like, how do you like. How do you not understand what's going on here? Because like you were saying, there was like a... Yeah, it's like, if you played one game against this matchup, you, you would, would know. know. Is is kind of like what it felt yeah. like. Um, and I felt like people just didn't know. And then, like, we got to top eight, and I was like, holy shit. These guys are so much better than me. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Dude. Right. Like, there was still some... There's some misplays, but you expect to see that. And then by the time we hit top four, I was like, these guys would smoke yeah. me. I was like, I'm not at this level. And it really, like, that was kind of nice to see. Because, like, I have taken my foot off the gas... For the last like year, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it was nice to be like, oh shit, 
like that's what i mean that's why if i want to do it i gotta that's do what it, I, that's right? what i meant from like the the passing of the torch because there was players mm-hmm. like you whatever what am i kever whatever the people that have been very good for a long time <clears throat> and then like yeah that top four was like just people that are taking it to a, a new level that are very yeah. good that really drilled down have obviously done a lot of work a lot of prep work um and you see that in every game every competitive endeavor that like there's levels to it and you see it improve over time and yeah we saw it there at worlds and um i loved it i love seeing it but it also just like reinforced to me that like how much work goes into it to be the best and like i want that you for forget. sure but i'm like i don't have that kind of time and like you know there's i hate making yeah. excuses ever because like there's time you could do it but like it is a lot of work you, you gotta want that shit right like anyone could technically like yeah i don't know what's maybe like maybe playing the nba like if you could if you could practice long and hard enough that you could like sink threes over someone that's like six fucking five or some shit that like you know jumps really high like you there's a certain amount of like practice that like maybe you could do and it might be insane it might be honestly absolutely insane and that maybe maybe even then you can't do it um i've i'm like losing myself on this point long story short this is, this is an analogy i'm like i kind of lost <laughs> myself in the analogy um the amount of time that you have to put in the amount of work you have to put in is insane very high it's unreal. yeah very i mean like high. i think back to the times i felt like i was legitimately one of the best or like the best in anything magic flesh and blood rune terra um and it's 10 hours a day. Yeah. Like, it's my whole life. You know, like, if you want to be, if you want to actually be, I was talking to someone uh, about this and they were like, oh, yeah, no, Caleb's like, that's my name. If you don't know, I Caleb's know. like really, really good at this card game. Tell him. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty good at this game or whatever that I play. And they'd be like, well, how good are you? And I'd be like, oh, I mean, like, there's a serious argument for me being like a top competitive player, like in the game. You know, like if you li- if you list people with the most success, like I'm one of the names that come up and they're like, wow. So what's your like rank right now? And I t- I'm, I'm rank one right now. And they're like, holy shit, you're the best player. I'm like, no, <laughs> not even close. Right. Not even close. Um, And then I had to explain like. To someone who had never like who's not really part of the space, I had to explain. I was like, I had to explain what goes into being the best and if you actually want to be the best in the world at something better than literally everyone else, you have to like, people say this a lot. You have to like sleep, eat and breathe, whatever it is. Right. But it's It's true. true. Like the times I felt I was the best in the world um, or had a, or like, you know, I felt like I could take on anybody. Like I, I had a chance to beat literally everybody was the times where like, all I did was practice and not like play the game, play the game and practice are not the same thing. I do a lot of playing the game right now because I'm a content creator first and foremost, because I have to like, I don't know, pay bills or something. Um, But what I don't do is like practice as much. Um, And you're just always practicing. You're always thinking about it and you're always looking to improve. That's all you do. And then the second you take your foot off the gas, other people surpass you because that's what they are doing. This is all they do. Right. Dude. Okay. I got to tell this story again. I've told it before, but like this, this thing kind of blows my mind. And so this makes me a little bit sad. Because it's like, you know, you and I don't have the time typically that it requires to be on that level. Um, mm-hmm. Some I don't I don't want to make the excuse. I'm not going to say I, I want to I want to preface this by saying I do not think I'm not going to say because I do not think that if I put in the time I would be better than everybody else. That is not what I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you'd be you'd be, not the, you'd be I'm not trying to make the that top of the mountain like with, like with with I do like think I'd be five or ten other people. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. And and it's still possible, like you know, I won two Magic Grand Prix. These are fucking. It's a ridiculous accomplishment, and I was not the best player in either of those tournaments. Probably, I was, however, well enough prepared that I could, you know, if if uh, things went my way, I could win. Uh, it's it's tough to even get to that point. But okay, so the story about uh, one of my very good friends, uh, Ao Paquette, if anyone knows him. Um, so check this out. Yeah, for anyone. He, this is from magic he went from being the guy that nobody wanted on their team and so like when you do money drafts you kind of randomize it like oh who'd i get and you're like oh we got the freaking anchor over here i'll have to carry this guy 
Jesus, he's good for like an 03. He went from that to in one year, one year, all he did, like we're talking about, was practice on Magic Online all day, every day, all day, every day. That's all he did. And he went from that guy that nobody won their team <clears throat> to he went to his first pro tour, top eighted. Most people never, I've never top eighted a pro tour. You've, I've never top eight. It's a like huge accomplishment. First, first one he goes to. Second pro tour, he goes to his worlds, comes in second place, almost becomes world champion. And it goes back to back top eights, goes top eight into second. And then what does he do? Fucking retires. He has the most <laughs> insane career of anyone ever becomes he's probably top five players on the planet at this point. Because all he did was practice. And then he he's but he's smart, obviously, right? He's very smart. Uh, very, very intelligent. And he realizes the amount of effort and also like luck, because there is luck into it, that is needed to have this kind of result is insane and not worth it. Like financially he just like went and got a job <laughs> it was like much yeah much I mean, that's the better idea yeah. like... but it's so crazy for those of us that are like chasing the dream that he he goes like top eight into almost world champion into like quit forever because like season it's kind of like you know very similar to your story of going to the pro tour and being like oh yeah this is not it this ain't it yeah um yeah. i was actually just gonna bring that up i was like i went to i didn't top eight a pro tour right but i went to my first ever pro tour for Magic the Gathering. And all I wanted to do was be a professional Magic player. I just like, that's all I wanted to do. Um, so I worked my ass off. I went from first ever Magic game to being on the Pro Tour within two years. Just insane. Like, it was like, I've, I've, I've lots step. of friends that have played their whole life and like obviously maybe they don't play anymore, but you know, they played for like 10 years or some shit. Never once qualified for the Pro Tour. Yeah. It's a, it was a gigantic accomplishment. Um, and so then I showed up at the Pro Tour and, and I looked around and I was like, I don't want to do this. I was like, these people aren't happy. No, <laughs> like these these so pro tour grinders are not happy the to be here. They're happy miserable. People ever. Yeah. Deep down, they love it, but like really no one's really it. having. Yeah, and so and then I realized like all of them were broke. Also, <laughs> like, no one had any no. money, and the people who had money were the content creators. Yeah. Right, that's like a job. You're offering your a service, right? You're providing a service, yeah. and so I I absolutely like I didn't stop playing after that because I love I love the local circuit grind. That's actually my favorite part. Like, I almost prefer PTQs to Pro Tours. Yeah. I know that's like a wild they're thing so to fun. say. They're but fun to see all the, you got all so your fun. You get a car with your all buddies. Your yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you hit bad beat stories the on the way back to you like when you shop at way, Korean man. barbecue. It's so fun. So good. Um anyway, but like I knew what it took to get to to get to the top, and then I could see how much I had left to get better at, right? Um, if I really wanted to be like one of the best and I looked at it and I looked around at the people that were there and everything. And I was like, this is just not worth it. Um, and so I kind of stopped and then, yeah, it's same, not the same ish thing happened with Rutera. Uh, but I, I knew that I was going to have to be content first. I was going to have to be a personality first yeah. and a player second if I wanted to succeed. Yeah. And, uh, and then I saw where you would gotten to in like twitch streaming and stuff and i was like oh that's where i'm trying to get to you and you're like this is how much money i'm making i'm like no nah, i guess i'm out <laughs> none <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i guess yeah thank go god you, yeah. um thank god you pushed me to like start youtube jesus dude, christ so stubborn everything i'm like hey i think i'll make money do this so like so nah stubborn. they're like man good thing and i'm like hey i think we should do this other thing like nah they're like oh good thing um you have pretty good insights though uh every now and then you're like it, every it now works. and then we yeah every now and then like, well. nah, yeah. And i'm like yeah you know you're right yeah this is not a good one <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not it mm -hmm. um so what so you know i want to make this a bit of a learning experience because it's a bit of a downer for me i like you know i i got my goals i like top cutted qualified for worlds but like i didn't have the time to put in for like top 32 testing i, don't, I didn't do enough testing or properly enough for worlds and um, and so going into this year, I'm a little conflicted on exactly what I want to be doing. Because uh, I, I still want to do those things. And I still want to, you know, try to be at a level where I can at least be competitive, just like in Magic, where like, yeah, I'm not gonna be the best. But like, I can know if I know my decks well enough, like, that's fine, I can go in there, and, you know, kick some ass. Um, and I'm also, which is maybe good, because like, I kind of got burnt out in there for a while, and I lost my love for the game a little bit. Now, I'm like kind of balancing it a little bit more with like fun 
and trying to win. I think that's like going to be a little bit more this year for me. Um, so I'm curious with you though, because like the gap for me from where I am to the top is much higher from sort of where you are to the top. Um, and I'm curious what your thoughts are, what your plans are like competitively looking into 2023. I know it's obviously going to depend a little bit on what that ends up looking like landscape wise. A lot. Yeah. Well, it, that depends a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, I mean, the problem is, is like, I love competing mm -hmm. and I love learning and I love getting better. At things. Those are like, if I could define like what drives me as a person, it's those three, it's those three things. Yeah. Um, I love to learn things, get better and compete. Um, and so like, if I see a way financially or whatever that I could compete and I don't mean this like, right, dump more money in the price pool. Like, that's not what I mean. Um, if I see a way that I can balance like doing content to make enough money and still give me the time to like prepare and compete and stuff, then I would absolutely love to like give it, give it my all. I just don't think that's likely because it's really funny because I'm playing the game all the time, right? I'm a content creator for Legends of Runeterra. You'd think that's good practice, but it's not. It's actually like worse. <laughs> it's like almost worse than not playing very much. Um, it teaches you a lot of bad habits. Uh, you end up doing some bad stuff because like, uh, first and foremost, I'm an entertainer. I am a good player second. Um, and so, yeah, it's really tough to balance it. The goals of a content creator and what makes a good content creator are almost antithetical to like what you need to do to be a really, really good player. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I struggle with that. I struggle with that a lot. And so, yeah, I'm going to like, I'm going to still practice and I'm going to still try hard, but what I think might end up happening is that most of the time I'll focus just kind of on content and I'll just play. And then I would like to like a week before seasonals, just buckle down and like really practice my ass off or whatever. Um, will I be the best if I do that that way? No, because I'll need to be practicing all season, right? That's how it works. Cause if you're not practicing all season, someone else is. Um, but I think I can be happy and content with just being in the top. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't have to be the best. I just like to be included. <laughs> I, as long as I can play against the best and be up there with them, that's all I need. Um, I think that's probably enough for me because, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to prove to myself or whatever that I can still do it. Um, I know I'm super rambling here. No, no, I think you're nailing uh, it. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's just tough. It's just a, it's just a balancing of priorities. Yeah. And that's really 100%. What it is. And, um, you know, a lot of what you're saying is really resonating with me as well. And I think <clears throat> I'm going to do, I, I want to be in the, I want to be in the mix also. That's enough, right? I just want to be competitive. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to show up and be like, feel like I'm dead. Um, as long as I'm competitive and having fun. I'm going to like balance those two. Like for instance, when I topped the first seasonals, I did it with a lineup of three decks that were like tier two, mine, like bad tier two or mid tier two or whatever. Uh, like to the point that you wrote an article that was like, don't play this. And I was like, don't play yeah. these decks and you play that <laughs> yeah, lineup. Because yeah. I liked it. It was fun. And I was winning yeah. enough with yeah. it on, on the ladder. And uh, yeah, and I went and had fun and I, I ended up top winning. And so I think like that's kind of going to be where I'm at where like, yeah, I want to be competitive. I want to play the competitive decks. But if like, I just don't like a deck or I do like this other deck, like yeah, I'll just go there and like, just kind of balance those two mm -hmm. a little bit, which is weird. I know you guys are just like, yeah, why don't you just do that? It sounds obvious. But that's like weird for me to say because I like to win. I want to win. I want to win so bad. I love winning. Um, but playing decks you don't like and then not winning, that's like a real bad feeling. Miserable. That's so bad. Miserable. I'd much rather lose that's, that's, with decks yeah. that I like than like limp into top 32 with decks that I don't like and then like lose in the first round or something. Yep. Yep. The only time I play decks I don't like is if I feel like I am a likely to win first. Yeah, exactly. Like, not like I can win first. Like, like, yeah, like you got, or <laughs> you know you what I mean? To, like, yeah. like, you're not going to win first if I you go play this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will say, like, uh, I know this is Ledger and Terra podcast, um, but it was really, it was kind of unhealthy for me to try to all in competitive and content and everything into Runeterra. It was really tough for me because my life, my life, livelihood, um, sense of self worth was all tied into Legend of Runeterra. Mm -hmm. So like if the meta went bad, I went bad. Yeah. Basically. My I got less views. I didn't want to compete. The meta's bad for me. Like it would like just it would just create suffered. like the spiral. Yeah, it was so bad at some point. 
Um, now I have like a better support system, right? I have the Master Room Terra Squad. I have like a full-time editor um, for YouTube and that helps like immensely. And then um, something that I find myself doing in order to not create that is um, I scratch that competitive itch generally with flesh and blood. Um, I just, it's just nice for me to have that thing on the side that I don't need to turn into content Yeah. because anytime I'm like practicing Runeterra, if I'm just practicing or whatever, not on stream, I'm just trying to get better. It's I feel guilty. Yeah. You know, it's like, why aren't you making this content? Like, this is your job. This is what people expect of you. Um, so it's really nice to have that somewhere else. Yeah, we've talked about this before. It's like artists that sometimes paint per se, like something just for themselves that they'll never show, never sell. Uh, and I've, I feel that way too. I've wanted to get back into streaming and stuff, but I'm like, then it feels like work. And like, I just want to have fun and enjoy myself and like have my hobby back a little bit. Um, or also when I play Magic now, I just do it for myself. And I thought about streaming it, whatever, and like yeah. have some fun with everyone. But I'm like, I just want this for me. And, uh, and it's good. It's important to do that, I think. Um, okay, I know we're running up against time. Um, any uh, any final thoughts or anything on like worlds, perhaps? Anything you really liked? Um, things you like to see change for next year? Uh, the broadcast was phenomenal. Was the live broadcast. It was Woo! so good. It was so Beautiful. good. I was very impressed with everybody, um, especially Alan. I'm not the only one who said this, did but like job. I hope he never qualifies for worlds ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, hunt him because he did such a good job on the desk. Yeah, such a good job. Um, yeah blew me away actually because like i've i've cast things we've cast things right like I, I know what it takes um and i've never seen anyone take to it that well i felt like he provided um i felt like he provided something to the desk that's really tough and that's um very accurate competitive analysis basically on demand without feeling like uh an exposition dump yeah, I mean, he's he's so knowledgeable. He's played for so long that, like, you can tell it just comes down to him naturally. You know, he sees he sees all mm -hmm. the angles. He sees all the things. He's able to break it down really quickly. And and to that point, it's really hard to do in that situation. So if anyone has never been, like, in a live studio before, you've got all these huge cameras pointed at you. You've got, like, your people on either side. You've got earpieces in, people talking to you. Uh, you know, you're thinking about, like, the the thousands of people that are watching you at every moment um you know you're trying not to like sweat in your face and stuff it's like it's a very uh like stressful environment to be in uh especially you know they just kind of like threw it out there um so yeah he did a great job i want to see next year i want to see i want to see the i want to see the top 16 playing in person yeah yes i understand that's really hard it's but not like, that hard so cool <laughs> not that hard they had they the studio license, there just set up a couple everywhere. computers mm -hmm. and have them sitting there and like mm -hmm. it's it's not that hard at all it's just it takes some plan some logistics some planning and i think the the yeah. main reason or the issue is just making sure that everyone from our different parts of the world can actually fly and be safe and there's some covid that stuff the, there's some legalities yeah. and stuff but like you know magic the gathering pro tours have like 500 people that show up at some part of the world all around the world all the time and yeah, you could, you could definitely do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, now building on this, that I think next year they'll probably do it. Also, assuming COVID dies down, all that stuff's good. And like, you know. Yeah. Um, all right. All right, we're out of here. Um, again, hope to see you guys uh, the tournament on Saturday. And um, if not, we will see you next week. Thanks again. Peace.